a very special episode of the Adam Friedland Show. I'm your host, Adam Friedland. A major criticism that we've received over the last couple of months is that we at the Adam Friedland Show worship at the altar of A-list celebrity. And to that I say, guilty as charged. For the past six months, the Adam Friedland Show has welcomed a who's who of Hollywood and Washington, D.C. movers and shakers. But I can't help but think sometimes that we've lost touch with the show's original thesis. And that's to provide a space for civil conversation where we talk about contemporary life. So tonight's show will hopefully be just that, a conversation about real issues between real Americans. Not talking heads, not elites, not women. Anyway, maybe next time. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming returning guests, fan favorites, Doug Levinson, a transcendental meditation expert and founder of the Flower Power Collective, and Gene DiNapoli, a veteran entertainer of 40 years, over 40 years. Thank you. Thank you for these guys. So before we begin, let's go over a couple ground rules. So there will be four categories, foreign policy, domestic policy, New York policy. I know you guys are big New York guys over here. Mm -hmm. And uh, a fourth category that we're calling potpourri. Potpourri. Yeah, like the bathroom. Thanks. All right. Issue one, are you guys ready? Yes. Yeah, okay. Them. We're going to go to Gene first on this. After a tense five-day standoff, the United States shot down a Chinese spy balloon off the coast of South Carolina. For the first time, Americans experienced a tangible symbol of the national security challenge from Beijing. What could be done to ease the tension between the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party, in the Biden administration. Gene first. The tension now after it was shot down? Mm -hmm. What can be done? I think we should shoot the next one down even quicker. Mm -hmm. The tension will go away because they'll know where we stand. There's tension when you don't know where each opposing force is. Mm -hmm. That creates tension. Right. If I know that that person's not going to take any shit, there's no tension because I know what the ramifications mm -hmm. are. So I either stand here or I cross that line. So you think that shooting the balloons will ease the tension? Is that what you're saying? I think it won't happen again. It won't happen Because they know again. now mm -hmm. what the ramifications will be. The balloon gets shot. The balloon. Okay. And Doug, how about... Okay. It's very simple. We had a four-star Air Force general within the past week and just before this incident who made it very clear that if they try anything with Taiwan, which really is the bottom line, they're going to regret it. In terms of this incident, I am convinced, going back to the fact that they could read license plates in Moscow 60 years ago, yeah. that whenever this thing actually showed up, that they were able to greatly compromise its ability to gather intelligence and bring it down as soon as they felt that they could do it in a safe mm -hmm. way and gather whatever intelligence from the material of what they, they shot down. Yeah. So my main bottom line is always for them to understand that Taiwan becomes the bottom line yeah. and that Ukraine should be the lesson is to like, don't even think about it. And when you get an Air Force, a four-star Air Force general, mm -hmm. the level of intelligence involved and the warning that's being put oh, out. Oh, up there. Right. Yeah. So I'm, I'm pretty cool about it. I mean, yeah. should they be trying this stuff? Of course not. It, it strikes me as odd that they would send over a surveillance balloon when they have stealth drones for surveillance and they also have a vast network of satellites. My, my impression is that you have a real disconnect between elements of their military, mm -hmm. elements of their intelligence, and elements of their political leadership. Interesting. And, and they are running things in a very fragmented mm -hmm. and haphazard way. And they've really, I mean, Hong Kong, as somebody who has a British background, I want it back. Okay. Back for the, for the king, for Chuck. Well, not the king. king I'm not Chuck. following him. But as a British person, it had been a crown colony, and I wanted at the very least to be autonomous mm -hmm. and not under what they've done. They made a promise that it would be 50 years. They broke the word. And if you break your word, you should be held accountable for this. It strikes me as like in a, in a day and age where we don't trust anything that we see, sending over a balloon is a little bit of like a showy, fancy it's boy crazy. kind of move. I don't know. Especially when they have satellites. It was very poorly handled. It was very yeah. amateurish. 
And so, it doesn't even, to me, it doesn't even qualify as a provocation mm -hmm. because it was so, like, in the end, I mean, I laughed. I thought the photographs were hysterical. You you reacted. How do you, you, how do you not consider that a pro provocation? Because it They're couldn't do any real damage. Oh, so in order for it to be real, it has to do damage? Well, the potential. I would say. And yeah. you don't see any potential no. in not, this not balloon in a, gathering in big, intelligence. Not in a big white blimp that was like falling all over the place for days on end, where they could have taken it down any time they wanted. You know what? I think that right? I think we're ninety five percent in agreement on that. Yeah. I think we're I think we should we shoot the damn thing down. You know, I was expecting, uh, have you ever seen these gender reveals before? Sure. They shoot it and there's a bunch of, yeah. of blue smoke. <laughs> or blue <pink laughs> smoke. Yeah. That's very good. Foreign policy, issue two. I feel like I'm in the McLaughlin group. Issue two. I called him once. You called McLaughlin? Mm -hmm. On the show, or you called uh, him at his, his phone. house? Did he take your you phone? You his house? Yes, he there did. He go. couldn't have been more gracious. It's a terrific said, kind. How are you? The real, the real uh, deal. He the real deal. My friend had had him. He said, have your friend call me. Mm -hmm. a very amazing person. Fantastic. Called I called McLaughlin house. once till he didn't pick up. Uh, really? Yes. He, he won't take your calls though. You're from good, a different part of the Bronx. Yeah, yeah, different part. Yeah. All right. Foreign policy. Issue two. The war in the Ukraine. Huge topic. On the 24th of this month, it will mark a year since Putin's invasion. And while American aid has helped push back the Russian invasion, many are arguing that what we need to do is increase our military support and ensure a timely end to the conflict, right? So should the United States provide the Ukraine with further military support like for instance, bunker busters, daisy cutters, and as a last resort, of course, thermonuclear uh, weapons. You are going to have a World War II type of resolution to this in that the Allied forces and the story that my friend and I always like, talk about, the little Japanese guy, when they signed the surrender on the Missouri with his little top hat and cane, yeah. what he said was they had no conception of what they did when they started all of it with Pearl Harbor with yeah. the Americans. Okay. And the war actually starts in Manchuria in 1931, but... Let's, let's, go, let's go to this, this young man over here, Gene. I'm not up on world affairs yeah. as much as Doug is. You're a New York guy. But I believe when the first drop of innocent blood was shed, mm -hmm. the United States, which I don't always agree should be, we are the police of the world. Mm -hmm. When the first drop of innocent blood was shed, we should have stepped in. We should have grabbed him by the throat and choked the living shit out of him. You would send in ground troops, uh, American soldiers. I would go to Putin's door yeah. with a battle ram yeah. and grab him while he was sleeping. See how he likes that. The reality is that he has nuclear capacity. Yeah. And unfortunately... We all have nuclear capacity. Yeah, but he could use it. So <laughs> can we. That's why he won't use it. Because right. he fine. knows if he does, then, we then, will. Then Mutually assured destruction. And take right. that idea off the table. Bad. Hmm? Mutual assured destruction. We go yeah. back to the Dr. Strangelove with this. I mean, that's, yeah. Right? It's scary, and, and, though. And the whole point what, of Kubrick with Strangelove is that if somebody goes too far, the whole thing's you up. You can't stop it. And that's 60 it's years ago effect. now, that film. Yeah. Let's move on. Let's uh, away from international politics. D domestic policy. I'll, I'll go to you first, Gene, because you, you were mentioning this before the show. Um, eggs. Um, buying eggs has become very expensive in this country. December 2022, the average price of eggs was $4.25. This is the average price. Mm -hmm. Okay. So more than twice of what they cost the year before. It doubled in price. Um, a lot of people are saying it's inflation, avian flu, war. That's uh, prompted this, uh, this ballooning of the price of eggs. Um, what can we do about the eggs? What do you think? How can we address I, I don't know what the answer is, but I know that the war in the Ukraine should not have an effect yeah. on our price of eggs. Yeah. We don't import them. Mm -hmm. We had the biggest sustainable force of, of, of oil. Yeah. And gas goes up. Every holiday it goes up when people travel. After the holiday, comes back down to a fluctuating 380. When somebody has to choose between heat and hot water and food, there's a problem. Let's the hear other it. side Do of I this, the other side of this, okay. You have to balance out that increased employment leads to increased demand, and increased demand is a built-in factor towards a certain amount of inflation, uh -huh. but you don't want a recession. And so there's yeah. delicate, delicate balance here between bringing more people into the workforce 
bringing that money in for demand of yeah. goods and being able to supply goods, is what Gene is saying, in a way that people don't have to go without. Okay. And Let's Britain, hold on, yeah. one other thing. It's okay. Britain is getting to the point now where it's off the scale. You're back to Dickens. Uh -huh. And um, as I say, my background is British, and I'm absolutely, the way you're heartbroken, I'm heartbroken. People have to choose between going to a, a warmth center because they can't stay where they live because they can't eat if they put the heat on. Yeah. And that's it's barbaric. Do you know today somebody told me that we're headed for another 1929? Yeah. I don't see that. What's that? We're headed to another crash I don't of the country like 1929. Who told you that today? Somebody at my job. Somebody who reads the newspaper. I don't read the newspapers. I don't yeah. watch the news, it gets me sad. Good. <laughs> okay? If the unemployment is so low, why are there 15 people on every corner looking for work and begging for money? Uh -huh. you, got you know what? Because you got 330 million people in America now. So just keep bringing in more people. Oh, no, no, no. Bringing more people to get everybody out. Oh, of we'll get there. We'll get there. Okay.